Mascot horror is defined as a subgenre of horror that's often made to attract younger audiences characterized by a recognizable and usually marketable mascot. Games in this genre may rely on cheap jump scares and are likely to have extremely convoluted lore. This is the definition that I stitched together out of a sea of definitions and discourse about what should be considered mascot horror, but eventually was a definition that I was satisfied with. Most mascot horror games these days basically fit into this exact description to a T. However, when you compare the great titan of the genre of Five Nights at Freddy's to whatever on earth is going on with a little game called, uh, Garten Ban Ban, what on earth happened to mascot horror? In order to find out how we got from dead kids possessing fursuits to whatever is currently going on in the Poppy Playtime universe, we have to start at the beginning of mascot horror. No, 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 not FNAF. Even though most people think where mascot horror begins is Five Nights at Freddy's, the true beginnings of what mascot horror is is a little bit more complicated. We need to start with creepypastas. If you think of creepypastas, you think of a couple of things right off the bat. Jeff the Killer, Ben Drowned, Dead Squidward, Sonic.exe, Smile Dog. But when you think of the face of creepypasta, there is a single character that people are going to think of first and foremost. Slenderman. The origins of Slenderman date back far before any Freddy Fazbearing or Poppy Playtiming. There was this little website called Something Awful that hosted a contest, actually. They wanted people to design a modern myth that would instill terror into people. A lovely gentleman who went by the name Victor Surge designed exactly that. He created two faked photographs, completely normal in every single way, except for the fact that there was a tall, suited man in the background with no face. And they created the deluge of content that would lead to the modernization of mascot horror. Before people hop down in my comment section, I know the first appearance of Jeff the Killer was in mid to late 2008, and there was of course inspiration from Batman before that, considering the Joker, so frankly, you can date creepypastas back to 1960s. Look, I know that Ted the Caver was in 2001 as well, but when you think of creepypastas, you think of late 2000s, early 2010s. You're gonna go to Slenderman. Maybe it's because of the video games, maybe it's because of Marble Hornets, maybe it's because of the movies, and maybe it's because of the stabbing, but Slenderman has been on the top of people's awareness for well over a decade. It's due to the combination of the simple design, the slight eeriness, and the fact that initially there was barely any story. Just the story of 14 young people and the photographer of the photos all going missing. In comparison to what the story has become today, that's an incredibly simple version of the story. There's been more lore and stories written, but I just want to focus on the story that was being told by Victor Surge just for a moment here. Both were photos of kids that were ever so slightly digitally manipulated to have Slender Man in the background. He's not exactly hidden, but he's not exactly front and center either. It might take you a minute to realize exactly what's wrong with the picture, but once you realize, you can't unsee it. Much like the FedEx logo of horror. Both of the pictures have their own uncanny nature to them in the first place, without Slenderman being edited in, but the thing that I want to emphasize was this unintentionally becoming what it became, and the subtlety of the creature that was created. Eventually, Surge would go on to write more and more lore once more attention was brought to his posts, and create whole pages of mythos. The myth would then spiral out of control, with contradicting lore, contradicting stories, and people making up their own interpretations. Despite the photos just being creepy, something that's often overlooked is the fact that Victor Surge was an incredibly talented author. However, now we gotta turn to Slender, The Eight Pages, the classic indie horror game that introduced millions to the myth of Slenderman that- OH MY GOSH! That looks so much worse than I remember it. Okay, in a video about mascot horror, that's been the biggest jump scare so far. That's kinda sad. Slender the Eight Pages, more commonly known as just Slender, and Marble Hornets, an online video series that was popular in the late 2000s, early 2010s, was effectively about Slenderman and created hours and hours of lore for the character. While both of these were based around Slenderman, neither of them had the exact same lore that Surge came up with. They had minor differences here and there that deviated from the lore that he had created in order to get their own intellectual properties. While Marble Hornets officially called their character the Operator, and Slender's only provided lore was the titular eight pages you find scattered around the map, both began a mainstream deviation from the original works created by Victor Surge. Marble Hornets was incredibly popular in its own right, and Slender was what pushed the game officially into being a mascot horror game. Technically speaking, it would be considered the first mascot horror game despite not necessarily being what we consider mascot horror to be today. A substantial amount of what we see in the modern day as far as mascot horror goes is what we began to see in the Slenderman era. Slenderman has gone on to inspire filmmakers, ranging from a whole bunch of indie horror movies that jip the concept that have been put to paper so many years before. The tall faceless horror in a suit is something that people would use as a Halloween costume or in student films for a lot of years to come. 
nowadays, Slenderman's a lot less talked about. Like I said earlier, there was a stabbing incident that happened in Wisconsin, a movie that was an absolute box office bomb, and there's been no new Slenderman content for a relatively long time. But this doesn't mean that he's not still around in the cultural zeitgeist. When the FNAF movie was announced, the amount of parallels drawn to Slenderman was ridiculous. And the same thing with Iron Lung and the Resident Evil movies. All connections being drawn to one of the OG horror icons that got a movie, the Slenderman. If anything, I'd love to call Slenderman the mascot of mascot horror. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. I'm trying to narrow in on 2,000 subscribers here, and who knows, by the time this video goes up, I may have already passed it. Like the video if you enjoyed, and comment down below what you liked, what you disliked. I'm always happy to take feedback, incorporate that in, and make these videos as good as I can. Thank you so much, I'll see you next time. Au revoir.